Good afternoon, my name is Nora and I'll be your conference operator today. At this time I'd like to welcome everyone to the Asian American Pacific Islander Nurses Association supporting and mentoring the next generation of nurses to promote a culture of health webinar. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. After the speaker's remarks, there will be a question and answer session. If you'd like to ask a question, simply press star then the number one on your telephone keypad. And if you'd like to withdraw your question, press the pound key. Thank you, Dr. Winifred Quinn, Director of Advocacy and Consumer Affairs and Center to Champion Nursing in America. Ma'am, you may begin your conference. Great, thank you so much. Good afternoon or morning to some of you and welcome everyone. Um, thank you for taking the time to join us for today's webinar. We are very excited to host our webinar with the Asian Pacific Islander Nurses Association who is a member of uh, the Campaign for Actions, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Steering Committee. Today's webinar will, during today's webinar, we will discuss the health needs of Asian Pacific Islander communities and how nurses are involved in addressing the health and improving the health of, in those communities. We will learn about APENA's efforts throughout the nation to promote a culture of health and health equity by mentoring and supporting nurses and students through research, practice, policy, and education. We will learn about how APENA members and chapters can collaborate with the Campaign for Action state-based action coalitions to promote the health and well-being of AAPI communities. Before we go any further, I do want to point out that we are recording today's webinar, and so if you miss a section or would like to pass it to a colleague, which we highly encourage you to do, you can find the recording by going to our website, www campaignforaction.org backslash webinars. Also, we will take questions over the phone at the end of the webinar, but we also encourage folks to type questions in throughout the webinar using the chat function. Be sure to send your questions to everyone and not just Scott. Now I would, I'm delighted to introduce our facilitator for today's webinar, Dr. Adriana Perez, a dear friend and colleague. Dr. Perez is an assistant professor of nursing and a senior fellow at the Leonard Davis Institute of Health Economics at the University of Pennsylvania School of Nursing. Her current study, Meaningful Activity and Quality of Life in Older Adults, Older, older Latinas with Dementia, is funded by the National Institute of Nursing Research, and it includes Latino elders with dementia and their caregivers, or it focuses on them. Adriana has an impressive leadership CV. She was selected as a Congressional Health and Aging Policy Fellow and was supported by the Atlantic Philanthropies and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention in that fellowship. She is a Fellow of the Gerontological Society of America as well as the prestigious American Academy of Nursing, where she served as the Chair of the Academy's Expert Panel on Aging. Dr. Perez received her PhD and Master of Science and back Baccalaureate of Science in Nursing from Arizona State University and um, also completed the Claire and Fagan Postdoctoral Fellowship funded by the National Hartford Center for Gerontological Nursing Research. Adriana, I'm very happy to hand this over to you now. Thank you so much. Next slide. Yes, thank you so much, um, Dr. Quinn. It's an honor and uh, I'm super excited for today's webinar. Next slide. As you mentioned, um, the Asian American Pacific Islander Nurses Association is part of our Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion Steering Committee. Here you see a list of other members uh, that are part of that committee and are critical to advancing our agenda on equity, diversity, and inclusion, and overall promoting a culture of health. Next slide. So I want to start off by what we mean by health equity. Um, here you see that um, in this definition, everyone has a fair and just opportunity to be as healthy as possible. This requires removing obstacles such as poverty, discrimination, and other consequences, including powerlessness and lack of access to good jobs with fair pay, quality education, housing, safe environments, and health care. Next slide. 
I also want to share uh, the framework, uh, culture of health framework, and talk about how the work today described our, by our two leaders fit within this framework, diversifying the nursing pipeline uh, and improving our workforce um, it helps to make sure that we have practitioners, advanced practice nurses, um, RNs in the field that are ready and committed to serve, uh, particularly in underserved areas. The four, you see here the four pillars of the culture of health action framework, making health a shared value, fostering cross-sector collaboration, creating healthier and more equitable communities, and strengthening integration of health services systems. In particular, we will hear examples of how APINA is advancing um, health equity in Asian American and other diverse communities throughout our country by creating healthier and more equitable communities. Next slide. Here's the overall diversity of the RN workforce from 2009 through 2016. Um, you can see here that the Asian nursing population has increased from 7.9% to 8.9% from 20, 2009 to 2016. And you see other populations here included. We're focusing on the Asian nursing population, and I think it's important to point out that this growth of, from 7.9 to 8.9 has, has been steady. Um, and what's important to know is that our Asian population in the country is expected to more than double from 15.9 million in 2012 to 34.4 million in 2060. This is an increase from 5.1% to 8.2% over the next couple of decades. Therefore, uh, having a workforce that mirrors that growth is critical. Next slide. To acknowledge the important contributions of Asian American and Pacific Islander communities, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services uh, Office of Minority Health uh, recently celebrated Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month in May. This is um, important because while, they, while the month um, included many different um, teaching tools for the community, um, one of the highlights was that life expectancy for Asian American women is one of the highest, 85.8 years, more than any other ethnic group. However, living longer doesn't always mean living healthier. Um, researchers pointed out that um, life expectancy also varies among Asian subgroups and that um, Asian Americans contend with numerous factors which may threaten their longevity and their health. Some of these negative factors are infrequent medical visits uh, due to many fears and um, access to our system, language barriers, lack of health, access to health insurance coverage, and Asian Americans are at most risk for conditions, health conditions such as cancer, heart disease, stroke, unintentional injuries, and diabetes. Therefore, the importance of staying active and healthy and prevention of diabetes management was a focus of this May 2019 um, Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Next slide. Which brings us to our two speakers and leaders today. Um, I'm uh, excited to um, introduce them because I have found many, um, we have many of the same passions and background. Uh, first of all, Dr. Alana Angosta, Angosta is the president of the Asian American Pacific Islander Nurses Association. Um, she is a tenured associate professor and director of the MSN program at the University of Nevada Las Vegas School of Nursing. She completed her Ph.D. at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Her research interests include cardiovascular disease, physical activity, obesity, and vulnerable populations. She has had several publications related to her research as well as grant funding. She is a fellow of the AACN's Elevated Leaders in, American, in, a, in Academic Nursing, and she's also a fellow of the NIH, NINR, Summer Genetics Institute's Research Program, and John Crawford, Newman Systems Model Research Institute. Alana teaches primarily in the MSN and doctoral programs at UNLV School of Nursing. She is a board-certified nurse practitioner and a member of the Sigma Theta Tau International Honor Society of Nursing. Um, uh, joining her um, is Dr. Alpert, Dr. Patricia T. Alpert, 
founding dean of Arizona College School of Nursing, Las Vegas campus. Prior to her position, she was the chair of the physiologic department School of Nur at the School of Nursing at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas. While at UNLV, she taught in the Family Nurse Practitioner Program. She also taught health policy classes in both the MSN and DNP programs. Dr. Alpert's program of research is concentrated in obesity and the alternative exercise effects on balance, memory, and mood in older adults. Her long-term goal is to strengthen knowledge in the areas of balance and obesity so that plausible interventions can be initiated. She just completed research um, across decades from 20 to 60 plus years to identify the decade of life in which balance begins to decline and to identify which of these three systems involved in balance, including visual, vestibular, or so somatosensory, is affected initially. Utilizing her prior research on vitamin D deficiency, Dr. Alpert hopes to assess the relationship of associated muscle weakness due to vitamin D deficiency and declining balance. Her current research on obesity centers on balance, quality of life, muscle strength, and obese older women with knee osteoarthritis. Dr. Alpert is a fellow of the American Academy of Nurse Practitioners and holds an ANCC national certific certification as both pediatric and family nurse practitioner. She is also an NLN certified nurse educator and clinical nurse specialist. She has reviewed many articles. She is, I know she's um, an editor of, serves as an editor in several journals and writes bi-monthly columns on preventative healthcare issues, which appear in Home Healthcare Management and Practice Journal. So you can see from their, both of their bios, uh, they're nurses that are close to my heart that were all from the Southwest. Uh, practice and taught there, nurse practitioners, researchers, passionate about advancing health equity, teaching and mentoring the next generation of nursing students and nurses. So next slide. With that introduction, I'm happy to turn uh, this presentation over to Dr. Angosta. Thank you very much, Dr. Perez and Dr. Quinn, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the time to join us for today's webinar. With me is Dr. Pat Alpert, immediate past president of AAPINA, or APINA. We're grateful for this opportunity that we bring our organization to the spotlight of the AARP and Robert Wood Johnson Foundation's Campaign for Action, and to share with the public the APINA's history, mission, objectives, and the efforts that we are doing to help promote and support a culture of health and health equity. Next slide, please. I'll provide an overview of the AAPIs and our organization profiles and some of the efforts that we're doing, and Dr. Alpert will discuss the efforts and initiatives to promote a culture of health and health equity. So based on the 2017 U.S. Census, there are 22.2 million Asian Americans living in the United States. They are the fastest growing minority group. Asian Americans are divided into different subgroups, Chinese being the largest, followed by Asian Indians, Filipinos, Vietnamese, Koreans, and Japanese. Next slide, please. These six origin groups make up 85% of Asian in the United States. Next slide, please. With regard to the Pacific Islanders and Native Hawaiians, there are almost 2 million living in the United States. Mostly live in Hawaii. Some of the communities are in Guam, Samoa, and other Pacific Islands, such as Northern Mariana Islands, Micronesia, and Palau. Next slide. This is our Apina logo. It represents waves and oceans, and the yin and yang representing the Asian uh, Pacific Islanders values. Next slide, please. Let me talk to you about um, the history of APINA. So in 1991, there were 14 nurse educators, researchers, and administrators that came together at the request of the Office of Minority Health and the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. It was at that time when APINA was formed. In January 1992, in Washington, D.C., APINA was invited to attend the first Invitational Congress of Minority Nurse Leaders, along with other national minority nurse associations. 
APINA is one of the founding associations of the National Coalition of Ethnic Minority Nurse Associations, also known as NSIMNA, in 1997 and was very instrumental in obtaining NSIMNA's first grant focused on mentorship and leadership. APINA's first conference was held in 2004 in conjunction with the National Black Nurses Association. APINA plays a central role in advocating for healthcare and mentoring the next generation of nurses to promote culture of health. The founding members and the board of directors are listed on our website. Please check it out at aapina.org. Next slide, please. APINA's vision is to serve as the voice for Asian American Pacific Islander nurses around the world. Next slide, please. Our mission is to make every effort to positively affect the health and well-being of AAPIs and their communities by supporting nurses and nursing students, promoting networking and collaborative partnerships, and influencing health policy through individual and community actions. Next slide, please. Guided by the vision, mission, and objectives of the organization, APINA plays a central role in helping its members become leaders in the areas of research, education, and practice. Who we serve. Our organization is a non-for-profit professional organization. Our members are actively engaged in research, practice, teaching, and service, and represent geographic diversity. Our program and services include annual conferences to showcase our members' research, practice and innovative works, an opportunity to network with AAPIs and others to form new collaborative partnerships, leadership mentoring program for AAPIs working in the area of psych mental health nursing, other services are awards, scholarships, and grants to help promote the mission of our organization, public forum to share our members' research findings, educational works or practice issues, and leadership relevant to AAPI shared through our Asian American Pacific Islander Nursing Journal. Our competencies include timely and relevant education and training, uplifting the AAPI community so that our members will come together to advocate on behalf of all AAPIs at the state legislature to promote the health care of AAPIs and to ensure that members are engaged on key policies and legislative issues. Next slide, please. Here's the uh, breakdown of our um, APINA membership. Started in the low 80s members, uh, now we have 488 APINA contacts. Um, so 56% of our members are employed in academia. 22% are employed in the hospital. Next slide, please. As you can see, majority of our members have graduate degrees. 38% have um, PhD, some with dual degrees of PhD and DNP. 7% are DNP prepared. 20% have master's degree and 19% have bachelor degrees. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Thank you. So let me talk to you a little bit about our benefits. Uh, joining APINA provides several benefits to include grants, scholarships, and awards. Members apply and applications reviewed by the awards committee, opportunity to publish in our APIN journal and newsletter, and other benefits are available in our website. Next slide, please. Next slide. With regard to the grants and awards, APINA has the Akura Mental Health Leadership Scholar Award. I'll talk to you about this in a moment, and Dr. Albert will do too. Other awards that we provide to our members include Research Grant, Ethnic Minority Nursing, JRO Psych Scholarship, and the U. Philip Zhu Mentoring Award. Next slide, please.
In terms of partnership, we are partnered with the AARP and Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, Future Nursing Campaign for Action, and SIMNA, Asian Community Development Council through the AAPNA of Nevada, the uh, NAPNAP for, for Vulnerable Youth, and currently working on the partnership with AACN's Graduate Nursing Student Academy. Next slide, please. So APINA has five objectives, and, uh, and I'll talk to you about, about those objectives and what uh, efforts that we have been doing uh, in promoting uh, the culture of health. Um, so for objectives one and three, uh, for specific to objective one, uh, APINA fosters network and connections with other organizations by gaining and sharing information through conferences and collaborative partnerships and working together on common issues related to improving the health of a APIs and yield a greater voice on healthcare and nursing concerns. For example, all presidents of the ethnic minority uh, organizations, including myself, um, got together at the NSIMNA summit, summit held in March in California and discussed the healthcare issues facing minority nurses and patients and plan to tackle these issues. Under uh, my leadership, we have also partnered with the nursing organizations such as the National Association of Pediatric Nurse Practitioners to help promote their mission of improving the quality of health care for children and vice versa. Our obje second objective um, deals with um, changing trends in a API health care issues. Our organization provides educational training for our members focusing on best practices for specific health issues of AAPI to other organizations and their network to assure healthcare needs are met through conferences, our newsletter, and our journal. Another example, uh, one of our active, um, the most active chapters is the Nevada chapter, has its own weekly radio show, Healthy Mondays and have different guest speakers uh, every week with um, expertise on topics related to health and current issues faced by AAPIs um, in Nevada and beyond. Our third objective is that our organization is a convener for APINA healthcare issues. We have developed partnership with the Asian Community Development Council in Las Vegas. Our Nevada chapter, again, is actively involved with this council and participated in the roundtable with California and Nevada senators to represent our organization and acquire vital information about their initiatives and plan to help the AAPI communities. Next slide, please. In terms of objective four, uh, as mentioned earlier, our Organization is a collaborative partner with NSIMNA, whose president is also the director of operations of the Nevada Action Coalition, Dr. Deborah Tony. Um, additionally, um, we have partnered with the Akura um, Foundation to help develop leaders in the area of psych mental health care for AAPIs. Through this grant, we have scholars and mentors uh, who have independent practice in Las Vegas in psych mental health caring for AAPIs community. Um, our fifth objective, uh, our organization has devoted years to the training and development of its members through educational grants and trainings, as I mentioned earlier, uh, with the Okura Foundation grant and our own grants that we provide to our members. Next slide, please. So APINA has three chapters, uh, Hawaii chapter, um, the Southern Nevada, and also the North Carolina chapters. Our chapters are crucial because they extend our work and serve as the conduits of our na national organization. In 2018 alone, the Nevada and North Carolina chapters were established. Several efforts and initiatives are being done. For example, with APINA of Nevada's efforts uh, are geared to promote the culture of health for APIs in Nevada and beyond. The North Carolina chapter focuses more on expanding its membership and mentoring of students and faculty. The Hawaii chapter is doing community activities with the Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders to promote health and wellness. Next slide, please. APINA's main high points are the conferences. The conferences generate funds that help provide scholarship and grant awards to our members. 
conferences are also ideal for networking, collaborations, professional development, and sharing of research findings and scholarly activities for our members. Um, for the first time this year, we are holding a joint international conference in Taiwan in conjunction with the Taiwanese Nurses Association. Possible future venues include Korea or Japan. Next slide. With regard to the health uh, profile of AAPIs, the literature indicates that the common health conditions and risk factors for AAPIs and the Pacific Islanders and Native Hawaiians are um, outlined in slide 29. Next slide, please. So the common health conditions and risk factors for Asian Americans include heart disease, stroke, um, diabetes, cancer, liver, and pulmonary diseases, tuberculosis, suicide, unintentional injuries. Several factors that impact the health of AAPIs include lack of access to health care, infrequent medical visits due to language and or cultural barriers, lack of insurance, and fear of deportation. And Dr. Um, Perez mentioned these uh, factors uh, on her introduction earlier. Um, next slide, please. With regard to the Pacific Islander and Native Hawaiians uh, health profile, the common risk factors and health conditions um, that uh, affect these uh, communities include obesity, diabetes, heart disease, stroke, cancer, liver and pulmonary diseases, HIV, or AIDS, tuberculosis. Other health concerns include alcohol consumption, smoking, and unintentional injuries. Next slide, please. <coughs> so Dr. Alpert will now talk about the APINA's efforts in promoting culture of health and health equity, um, beginning slides 32 and um, um, toward the end. Dr. Alpert is very instrumental because she's been with the organization when it first started and served as a treasurer for several years, president-elect, president, and nominating committee chair. Let's welcome Dr. Alpert. Thanks, Dr. Alpert. Next slide, Thank please. you, Alona. You're welcome. Thank you, Alona, for that introduction, and thank you, uh, Dr. Perez, for your introduction as well. Um, so now that you have an overview of how we actually um, operate in terms of our mission, our goals and strategies, I want to take you through and highlight the milestones of APENA's <laughs> accomplishments towards health equity and for, the Pacific, for Asian Pacific Islanders. So I want to take you back to approximately two, 2007 when we had our national convention where, um, and we were in a business meeting and one of our uh, agenda items was really looking at membership. When one of our members, you know, oh my God, we are really mostly made up of educators and researchers. Now this person also was a practitioner and he taught in a college, at a college in um, Washington State. So he brought that reality to our attention and we decided that we really, you know, uh, understanding that research edu and education informs practice and vice versa, we needed to really ex expand our membership to include Asian and Pacific Islander nurses that are in the practice setting as well. Because we, because if that occurred and we had that balance, then we would be able to get information, research information to the bedside as evidence more quickly. So we, um, as, as you can see, Dr. Alona's slide um, regarding our um, composition of our nurses and where they come from or where, where they're working currently has expanded in terms of the practice areas. A few months, uh, a few years later, after we decided that we were going to expand and, or at least have a concerted effort to really look for, um, you know, and, and recruit members from the practice setting, we decided that we wanted to expand membership to include other healthcare professionals as associate members. Um, and th with this idea of working interprofessionally so that we would have a greater impact in terms of working towards, you know, our goals in terms of health equity. Next slide, please.
So in one area that we felt we needed to make an impact in terms of health was in um, the psych mental health area, um, especially because we realize that Asian families oftentimes view mental illness as an embarrassment, and they will oftentimes try to contain and take care of this family member within their family circle and not seek professional help. So what we decided to do was write a grant into the Okura Mental Health Leadership Foundation, and we were awarded a three-year grant. And what this allowed us to do was to help mentor APINA members desiring careers in the area of, health, uh, of mental health. So during this three-year grant period, we awarded scholarships to 20 nurses and or nursing students working with the PINA members that were recognized as mental health experts. So these experts mentored these 20 awardees for a period of one year, so, and, and with, and it, in which time they completed a, a, a project with the understanding that this, this project would become their foundation to build their career on and ultimately achieving leadership and expertise in the psych mental health area. Next slide, please. So because we did a lot of mentoring um, with, you know, because that is one of, our, um, one of our things that we really do well, we decided we needed a mechanism or a way to recognize that the individuals in our organization that, that mentor um, faculty, students, and other nursing um, professionals. So what in, 19, in 2013, we developed the Zhu Philip Zhu Mentoring Award. So Dr. Zhu is that, the gentleman that you see in the picture there on the slide. Um, he, um, we named this award after him because, you know, if you, have, if you ever met him, you would really know why. Um, he was a real firm believer that we needed to, you know, to really help promote the um, professionalism and the development of Asian Pacific Islander nurses. Um, and he lived that by example. He was a role model. He was a great role model at that. He was the first awardee of this award, which was named after him. And since then, there have been several people who have also um, uh, uh, received this award. And if you look there, the names of the awardees are listed on that slide. Dr. Jillian Inouye, um, really received the award because she spent years, she devoted years um, mentoring um, Asian Pacific Islander nursing, nurses as researchers and educators um, as in her role of um, Associate Dean for Research at both the University of Hawaii, Manoa, and the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. She is still kind of retired, but currently working as um, the editor-in-chief for our journal, the Asian Pacific Islander Nursing Journal. Dr. Seligman was recognized for mentorship um, with nurse scientists as postdocs that actually worked in the National Institute for Nursing Research, which is part of NIH. Pat, and can I, I was just add, this is Alona. Can I just add some in terms of the outcome? Um, Dr. Inouye uh, and Dr. Alpert are very instrumental in terms of mentoring. Um, several faculty, like Dr. Inoue at University of Manoa, uh, when she was the Associate Dean for Research, um, the faculty that she mentored received uh, NIH grant um, funding, as well as uh, some of the faculty have become tenured. Um, at UNLV, I'm one of those um, uh, the faculty who, uh, you know, moved my research forward uh, with the help of Dr. Inouye as well, Dr. Albert, and uh, I received my uh, tenure with uh, their support uh, and mentorship. Um, thanks. Sorry about that. <laughs> Oh, no, that's okay. That's fine. Um, actually, Dr. Angusta is one of my students. Um, she was one of the few people who was my student as a bachelor's degree uh, nurse and then came back and was my, um, my student in the master's program in fam as a family nurse practitioner uh, student and then also then came back to teach with us and was my peer. And then when I became chair in the Department of Physiology, um, they, she was under, uh, she was um, in my department and I helped mentor her through her tenure um, period. And so that's kind of why I guess I won the award. I also um, currently still mentor um, college students who are members of OCA. 
um, and who and these students are are students that are interested in actually developing, desiring, or pursuing careers in the health in the health field. My association with OCA has been for the last ten years, and the, my mentoring for of nursing faculty and students over the last twenty eight years. Next slide, please. Okay, so in terms of um, how do we actually meet our objectives um, for research, practice, policy, and education, we have multiple streams in terms of showing our accomplishments so that we can actually um, let people know of what we do and in the hopes that we can network with other people to actually um, partner with them in terms of research, practice, and education. So one of the, the ways that we do this is through our annual conference, with, which um, I wanted to tell you about or did mention that we started in 2004. Examples of some of the topics that were presented in past conferences include such things as chemotherapy algorithm for safe administration of chemotherapy. Another is, this is Dr. Ngosta's area of expertise, cultural dance to improve blood pressure in, uh, among Filipino Americans. Um, another faculty um, it does has spent years in this area of parenting of first generation Korean children by immigrant parents. And then also we have had other people working in um, identifying appropriate medication therapies for mental health, therapies for mental health um, patients using genetic testing. So these are just a few of the, the kinds of areas that our, our, our faculty or our members are working in, and um, you know, if, the, if you would like to know about more about those, um, we feature some of them in our quarterly newsletter, which is accessible on our website. And besides our conference and our newsletter, we also feature or showcase the kinds of things that we have done or we're doing um, through our journal, which is the Asian Pacific Islander Nursing Journal. Next slide, please. So in the area of health policy, what we try to do is we try to advocate with other organizations so that we can network to actually make changes, uh, health policy changes for Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders. We began this campaign three years ago by really advocating to, to have our members move into leadership positions at education, research, and practice. And the thinking behind this is because we really feel that as a leader, you have easier access to a seat at the policy decision-making table. Um, we have also partnered with other organizations to try to get Asian American Pacific Islander nurses on organizational boards because we also feel that policy um, occurs at that local level as well. And we, as Alona mentioned, we are a member of NSIMNA, and we work together with NSIMNA to actually push our agenda forward for all minority populations. So this year, the, as Alona mentioned, that they had their summit in California, and really what we were hoping to do is rally the members uh, from the various minority nursing associations to identify ways to um, push our agenda forward and achieve our goals in terms of health equity through policy changes. Next slide, please. So this is just more about what we just talked about in terms of leadership. So I already mentioned these areas. Um, and we also, as Alona mentioned, we offer professional development training um, to, to promote leadership as well. So that, I guess, next slide. And I believe that's what, that's, this is my last slide. So I'm going to turn this over back to you, Dr. Perez. Yes, yes, thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> one of our objectives today is to talk about um, interest to increase the number of chapters, of APINA chapters in other states. You mentioned the three um, in Hawaii, Nevada, and North Carolina, and some of your um, initiatives and work that you discussed. And so I just wanted to um, take a moment and and, and talk about other states that you might be targeting uh, with the growth of the Asian American population, as you mentioned earlier, um, if that has been a discussion within the organization. So, uh, so uh, Dr. Um, Angosta, yeah, doc, go ahead. Yes, we, we do have um, members who voice interest in uh, forming a chapter in uh, California. Um, as well as in Washington and New York, uh, but somehow uh, when they 
you know, connect with us, and then we provide them the uh, information about forming a chapter. And then the issue is that um, they can't find additional members. So there's lack mm -hmm. of membership in terms mm -hmm. of, um, you know, like um, to form the chapter. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one of the challenges that we face at this point in terms of reaching out to those individuals who voice interest. Mm -hmm. um, so that those are the things that uh, we, we're going to be working on and we continue to work on. Um, other questions? I can well, share with you some of the initiatives of the chapters, uh, yes, of the chapters please. what they're doing. Um, as I mentioned earlier, one of our um, one of the most active chapters that APINA National have is the Nevada chapter. Um, they also have a good number of members, and uh, a few of the members are actually the founding members for the for the chapter, and um, are, are also uh, in, you know faculty at UNLV where I work. Um, some of the priorities and efforts that the Nevada chapter, for example. Uh, that help promote culture of health includes, uh, again, um, conferences. Uh, this chapter mm -hmm. just started uh, last year, and they already had their first uh, state cruise conference in <coughs> Baja, Mexico, uh, this April, uh, focusing on advancing nursing practice, education, research to improve the lives of AAPIs in Nevada and beyond. Um, they had speakers. Uh, from Johns Hopkins as well as University of Hawaii uh, School of Medicine. And I also mentioned that this chapter uh, owns a, uh, a radio show. It's called Healthy Mondays with mm -hmm. APINA of Nevada. This is a weekly radio show as a means to reach out to API communities in Nevada and beyond. Um, additional efforts include forming of the first Student Nurses Association of the Nevada chapter uh, this past March uh, with a private university, Roseman University Student Nurses Association, um, and also partnership with the uh, Asian Community Development Council and Las Vegas Hawaiian Civic Club in efforts to include all API uh, communities. Uh, this is an example of promoting health equity. Um, I also mentioned that the chapter uh, with the national organization as well uh, have uh, a collaborative partnership with the Asian Community Development Council um, and participated recently um, in the roundtable uh, with the senators in California and uh, Nevada um, to acquire information about their initiative and plan to help the API population. So these are uh, a lot of the efforts that uh, uh, that they're doing uh, that I wanted mm -hmm. to share with you. In terms of the North Carolina uh, chapter, um, because they because of they just started last year. Uh, however, they they they're focused more on uh, mentoring uh, student as well as faculty and expanding membership uh, and research uh, for the. Uh, Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders, the Nevada chapters, uh, focus is uh, health promotion mm -hmm. um, and wellness uh, among those communities. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's busy great. chapters. Yes, that's great. And you know, um, we we both mentioned the health status and the conditions that um, Asian Americans are um, at risk for. I'm yeah. particularly interested in your research. Both of you conducted work in the in these areas, and I'm wondering if you could share with our uh, participants why um, the Asian American uh, population is at risk for these chronic conditions. I, I imagine that it's similar to other ethnic minority populations like Latinos that are impacted by the environment and you mentioned, you know, lack of access to health insurance. But if you could talk a little bit more about what you have found and uh, what those risk, why the predisposition to those risk factors. Uh, well, there are several factors, and uh, one of them, well, some of them, some of the factors include, um, you know, genetics, um, environmental, of course, lack of access to health care. Um, and what I, 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 I got interested in, in terms of focusing on this research, because, 
you know, when I, when I went to the literature, um, my original research uh, focus was more on uh, women and heart disease. That was my master's thesis. But then when I went on and pursued my PhD, I went back to the literature. I was hoping that I would find more innovative stuff. And at that point, there are um, there were already um, a lot of research among women in heart disease and mm-hmm. um, didn't uh, find a lot of research among Filipino-Americans particularly. And, of course, that it, it's very personal to me because I have family members who are afflicted with heart disease. So, um, so genetics, family, uh, genetics, lifestyle practices, uh, as well as culture um, mm-hmm. and tradition uh, are mm-hmm. um, the common factors that contribute to the uh, um, health conditions um, and mm-hmm. also yeah. risk factors for uh, Asian Americans. Now, the, um, and this is a you know be, as I mentioned with um, and this is a question that came up through our chat box because there are those similarities with uh, Latino immigrants. Um, I wondered if if you are finding the same um, issue that uh, when people immigrate to the U.S., their health worsens. Um, and that, uh, you know, the, the experience of being an immigrant and those issues also impact their health. Are you finding that um, as people come here, immigrate to the U.S., that, they're, that that's when the predisposition to these risk factors occur? Mm-hmm. Yes, I, I do. Yes. And, in fact, interestingly, um, you know, for example, for, for Filipinos, uh, um, many of the Filipinos, uh, when they're, you know, when they're in the Philippines, they consume more of the vegetable, but they, they do like, you know, fried foods, and they, their uh, cooking tradition is deep frying and frying, right? So they consume healthy vegetable, um, seafood over in, you know, in the Philippines, but then when they migrate to the Western world, um, they're exposed to meats and, you know, other um you know, dishes, and then the tradition's still there. So instead of frying fish now, now they're frying meat. So it just double up their risk factors for developing chronic conditions such as mm-hmm. hyperlipidemia, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're exposed more to a lot of uh, variety of, uh, you know, uh, foods and, mm-hmm. and, and dishes. So maybe Pat can, you know, yes, uh, add great. more into this, but... Uh, so these are the things that we're looking mm-hmm. at. Um, and the nice thing about APINA is that a lot of our members look at, um, you know, uh, topics that are diverse. And, for example, Dr. Unok Im, who is the president-elect, looking at the Korean Americans, uh, mm-hmm. uh, for example, as her research. Dr. Lee, who is our treasurer uh, currently with APINA, uh, whose main research topic is um, uh, uh, gerontology uh, mm-hmm. among Asian Americans. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so we do have a variety. Uh, That's great. Mm-hmm. And Dr. So Alper, Pat- did you want to add? Yeah, did you want to add? Yeah. Yes, I do. Um, in terms of foods, it works both ways, really, I think, is what it is. Um, there are certain cultural um, things or foods in the diet and in, in people's diets and Asian American diets that actually do contribute to things like heart disease or high blood pressure, um, like the soy sauce and some of the fish sauces, those kinds of things that they continue to, to use when they're here in America. The other is that when you look at studies, um, of looking at like, especially in the Japanese, um, you know, um, from Japan, Japanese from Japan versus the Japanese that moved here to the United States, they are actually taller and and they're, they're, they're bigger when they move to the United States because after several generations of the American diet, um, they have um, really, uh, they, they fare better in terms of nutrition. Um, so that's, so it works both ways um, in terms of the diet and the kinds of foods that they select and, and mm-hmm. it, whether or not it helps you versus, it, you know, it, it contributes to, right. um, to illness. Um, the other um, point that I wanted to make was that oftentimes as clinicians, you know, we use these standards of practice and we look at BMI and waist circumference and we often say that these are the parameters that we need to look at 
for everyone. Well, it doesn't always um, fit for Asian Americans. Asians really, when you're looking at waist circumference, this, a smaller waist circumference really still is equal to high risk for heart disease and some oh. of the other um, mm -hmm. yeah, chronic diseases. So this is the reason why um, you know we have tried to put that information out. We've um, published some of those um, those kinds of differences in our journal, hoping mm -hmm. that we can get that information out to clinicians because mm -hmm. there is a difference. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I'm familiar with some of that work, and as I think this is why it's so important to have a workforce that not only is bilingual but bicultural and understands those, um, you know, the, those cultural um, factors. Um, one qu another question that came up in our chat box is if you could talk about some of the poli policy changes that APINA is advocating for either at the you know, local, state, or national level. I know, Dr. Anglosa, you talked about your work with California and Nevada senators meeting at roundtables and discussions. Um, could, I wondered if you could share some in any initiative or uh, policies that you're advocating for. So actually, it wasn't me who uh, presented at the round or um, um, attended the roundtable. It was the president of the Nevada chapter. However, mm -hmm. the uh, the director for the Asian Community um, Council uh, development um, has been uh, communicating with us, uh, and also, you know, he's part of our partner as well in terms of, um, you know, address addressing issues uh, of the health. Uh, um, and also, um, you know, plan to tackle, uh, to solve some of the health issues that AAPIs face uh, in the community uh, within the Las Vegas area and uh, uh, Nevada. Uh, in terms of a particular or specific policy, I will let Pat uh, cover that because um, she's been more involved uh, with that. Um, Pat? Right. So we don't really have um, any strict um, policy initiatives that we're working on at this moment. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get to the grassroots level first and really try to work in that area and then get the politicians involved in looking at how we are doing things. So the example is the Nevada um, chapter. Their work with the Asian Community Development Council, and that council is, uh, is really closely tied to our legislators um, up in Reno. And what we try to do is we try to inform them of all of the issues that we are seeing in terms of Asian um, populations here in Nevada. And what we're hoping to do is then to push some initiatives through um, once we, um, you know, show them that this is the kind of thing that we're doing. Um, that organization or that council is also putting together a clinic so that we will have, you know, the, uh, so the Asian um, population will have access to that clinic. And I say we because I know the, uh, the, um, the director very close, I mean, well, and he's trying to get me to work with them in their clinic. So um, as um, a PENA member, I probably will actually um, start getting involved in that organization. But that's basically how we've been trying to work is to locally get the politicians involved to get to know who we are, what we're doing, what what the issues are, so that we can move forward with legislation. And uh, can, I just, can I just add a couple of sentences to this? Uh, so this is one of the uh, main reasons why we've, you know, had the, uh, the summit uh, was when all the uh, presidents got together uh, at NSIMNA summit and discussed these uh, uh, issues, uh, in particularly uh, legislative and policy, and um, uh, one of the challenges of APINA is that we do not have a representation uh, uh, at the, uh, the state and national level in D.C. So uh, one of the reasons why I uh, collaborated and formed partnership with AARP with you guys is to bring APINA to the spotlight so that we can all work together and then hopefully you can also assist us to be out there um, and, uh, you know, representing our organization as well as our API communities. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is a, a, a very, the foundational, uh, hopefully we can, you know, be uh, acknowledged by, by other organizations as well as uh, stakeholders. But thank mm -hmm. you for this opportunity. This is oh, absolutely. Yeah, we are uh, very excited that we could um, 
hear your information, the important work that you're doing. Uh, just a couple of comments as we close out. I, I, uh, we, it looks like we're out of time. We have one minute um, and um, something for the group to think about. I know Blake posed a, a question now about social determinants of health for men in Asian communities, and I think the American Association of Men in Nursing would be an excellent collaborative partner on the issues uh, with men, Asian men and health, as well as um, in our last slide, this is really uh, if you can go to the next slide, um, it's really a question, discussion question that we pose to our audience. So I want to leave our audience with these two things, uh, thinking, number one, about how they can integrate what they have learned from this webinar into their work, whether it's practice, policy, research work. I think we've learned from both of our leaders and presenters today some very important uh, factors related to Asian American health. And what are additional resources or nursing-led initiatives that can help promote health equity in the Asian American Pacific Islander community and other diverse communities. Um, I think, um, you know, just off the top of my head, because we're talking about the Association, uh, American Association of Men in Nursing, uh, that sounds like a great follow-up um, resource there and the mm -hmm. work they are doing with caregiving. Um, but we are out of time. We do have one final slide for everyone. Uh, this is to remind you of our campaign resources where you can visit us at uh, www.campaignforaction.org. Here you will find many other webinars and tools uh, that promote health equity and inclusion, uh, as well as other reports and issues that the campaign is leading. With that, I want to thank you. I want to thank Scott, especially Tanaka, who's on our call today. He's been our organizer and webinar facilitator and a leader at the Center to Champion Nursing for us, uh, those of us that are working with the Equity, Diversity, uh, and Inclusion Steering Committee. I also want to thank you on behalf of our director, Dr. Winifred Quinn, and all of us, our team of consultants um, that work um, on these issues. Um, have been working on these issues for the past several years. Thank you for joining us. Um, I will ask our two presenters to remain on the line, and we look forward to meeting again in a future webinar. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank you, Thanks. Dr. Agosta.